Hi, hi, morning. So I think let us start with our main paper 2023 for silver. Huh? Can everybody see the screen? I think I share the password question. Everybody can see, right? Dr. G, can you see? Can, can, quite clear. Okay, good. So let us start with our first question. Okay. Abu signed an agreement with TAS Sandilam Berhad for TAS to supply material to his factory at Kota Baru, Kelantan for the manufacturing of his product packet supply contract. TNS has his registered address at Kuala Lumpur. For the purposes of supply and contract, TNS has appointed an agent, Ahmad, who resides in Kota Baru, Kelantan to source the material and arrange transportation for the supply. Wait, uh, let me admit some student. Okay, for the supply of the material to Abu Factory, as Abu does not have an office in Kuala Lumpur, he does not deal with anyone from past except when signing the supply contract. At all material time, Abu only deal with Ahmad in relation to the supply of the material under supply contract. Some of the Abu customers found that the products Abu delivered to them were defective and refused to accept the same. As a result, Abu suffered loss of profit amounting not less than 1 million. Upon investigation, Abu found that the defeat Okay. Defect in his product must have been caused by material supplied by Ahmad. Ahmad denied liability and claimed the material supplied by him are only one of many materials that are used to manufacture Abu product. The formula is to use uh, the formula that is to use to manufacture Abu product is not reduced in writing. Abu disagreed with Ahmad's contention and wishes to commence legal action to recover that the loss he has suffered. Advise Abu on the following. Roman 1. Whether he has a complete course of action and who he should sue. So, I think everybody have read the questions, right? So, um, for this action, because it's seven marks, ma, so obviously it's not that simple to say whether you can sue yes or no. That simple. La. You have to tell a reason. La. I think mainly it's because right now it involves two parties. One, it will be the contractual party, TAS and Dylan Berhad. And another one is Ahmad. So, in contract, from, from the contract side, of course, you can sue TAS. But the thing is, the person who supply is Ahmad. So now the question is, you should sue Ahmad or you should sue TAS or you should sue both parties. Okay? I usually will pay safe. La. If you are not sure... And even in practice also, we will suggest clients to sue both. La. Because uh, if you only sue one party, uh, let's say today I sue TAS, TAS will certainly push all the liability to Ahmad to say you should sue Ahmad. I, I don't deal with you. The, talk, the thing is not delivered by me. So therefore, my suggestion will be we should sue both parties, uh, which is TAS under the contract, and then Ahmad as an agent for TAS. I think if whoever has studied uh, commercial law in their LLP before, you will read this chapter called Principle and Agent, uh, I think something like that. I, I didn't take commercial, but for my friend, they told me uh, you will study some chapter like this, uh, which means you can sue the agent and also the principal. So therefore, I think this is how you get your seven marks uh, to advise that you can sue both. One is for contract and another one, another one is for the agent. Understand? Okay. Then let us proceed. Next one. In which court and where should his legal action be commenced? Okay. In which court? I think it's always very obvious because it's more than 1 million. So it will be uh, session court or high court because not less than 1 million. Mark. So actually, session court jurisdiction is up to 1 million. Mark. But to play safe, I will advise put high court. Lah. But you need to let the examiner know that you know uh, session court is maximum 1 million, high court is more than 1 million, but here they say not less than 1 million, right? And then, which court you should sue? Right now, if there are two court you can sue, one well, number one will be Kelantan, another one will be KL. KL is because uh, it's TAS office, uh, registered office. So pursuant to the section 23, you should sue following the defendant address, which is KL. 
or alternatively, the places the dispute arises, which is Kelantan. Okay, since it's only four months, ma, so you can just stick to either one. La. If you say Kelantan, then you explain off because the, the, the goods were delivered in Kelantan. If you say KL, then you say off because the defendant actress is in KL. Okay, in my answer, I read Kelantan. La. Okay, then next one. Mook of originating process to commence the legal action. I think this act, this question's been asking many many times in these few years lah. So basically, they want you to know what is the difference between OS and Rit Saman. So let me also briefly tell you what is the difference now. Um, for OS is like no dispute. For Rit Saman, there is highly disputable of facts. Okay. So for example, accident fraud case, you must go by Rit Saman's law. Uh, OS is like, for example, probate actions, um, what else? Uh, LA, and then uh, some declaration, then you may sit for original summon or order 89, the eviction of the squatter. So, but then just sharing, uh, although the law, uh, order 5, uh, if not mistaken, they say whether to use Rick summon or OS, it depends on the highly disputable facts or not. Uh, but I don't think this statement is entirely correct because you will notice certain circumstances, let's say like order 89, eviction of the squatter. Isn't it, it will involve a dis dispute as well? Why they use OS? So I wouldn't say it is 100% to say uh, to determine whether to use OS or risk summon, it depends on dispute or non-dispute. Because whether something is dispute or not, uh, it's not that simple, man, right? I, I know from past question, some, some students will straight away see, uh, let's say, like, if I'm not mistaken, last year, past question, they say, oh, uh, accident case, but the defendant admitted their liability, therefore it's by OS. This is wrong uh, because it's not depends on whether we will dispute or not dispute, whether the defendant will fight in the court or not. It's rather depends on the nature of the case. If accident, accident is confirmed disputable. It, it doesn't mean when the defendant doesn't want to dispute, uh, it becomes OS. You understand what I mean? So in other words, uh, you cannot just simple uh, decide whether it's OS or read just because they want to fight or they don't want to fight. Rather, it depends on the nature of the, the case and then also it depends on the procedure. So for example, order 89 eviction, although it may involve some dispute from the squatter to say, hey, my grandmother allowed me to stay here or so ever, but because Rules of court say so. It's you, the rules of court say it's using OS. Therefore, we use OS. Uh. So, okay. So, back to this question. Since it's like suing for the defect uh, goods. Uh, so, it def definitely will be start from the brief summons. Uh. Okay. Okay. Then, let us continue. Assuming Abu has commenced his legal action by way of rate at the high court. During the case management, the learner just gave a direction that any interlocutory application must be made two months before the trial, CN direction. Okay? On the first day of the trial, the counsel for Abu uh, wished to move the court for an order to amend Abu's stigma of case, stigma of claim. The learner just refused the request by Abu counsel on the grounds of the CN direction. The learner judge did not believe Apu testimony and found his products were manufactured using more than one material. The High Court dismissed Apu claim. See, here also they use High Court. Man. Okay. Uh, before we start these questions, uh, um, you guys know, right, if you want to amend the stigma of claim, you must do it before close of pleading. If you do it after close of pleading, you will need the leave of court. Okay. So here, Give your opinion whether the learner judge refuse of the request of Abu counsel is appealable. So the request here is what is to amend. So they are the basically they are asking if the court refuse for you to amend your statement of claim, is it appealable? Can you appeal or not? So I think uh some smart student will remember the what we call criminal. So the criminal test is whether it's final disposal, of right, right. So similarly, in silver, we have a similar case. They're also using the same test. Uh. So basically, for following this case, uh, they are saying the same thing. 
uh, do not allow you to amend your statement of claim. It's not something final dispose of your right. Therefore, this is not something appealable. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think this is this one is quite straightforward. Then advise Abu as to the relevant procedure and applicable test to be used to challenge the finding of the high court. So to challenge the high uh the finding of, of course will be appeal. Uh. It's not judicial review, uh, by the way. Judicial review is to challenge the governmental body decision, for example, DPKL, for example, um, industrial court, because industrial court is not a court, industrial court is a government body, so-called, okay, if you read the industrial relation act, okay, so to appeal, for high court to pro appeal, the first thing you need to take note will be whether we need the leave of court or not, so let me just have a share with you all, huh? So, this is the three type where you can appeal. Number one, as of right, when the claim amount is more than 250000 you can straight away uh, appeal to the court appeal without leave. But if with less than 250000 the claim, then you need the leave of court. And then, uh, consent judgment and the judgment declared final is cannot be appealed one. So further, of course, certain uh, matter, we don't know how much is the amount claim. Uh. For example, um, matrimonial matter, winding out bankruptcy. These four kind of matter, you don't need leave for court. You don't need to depend on the amount, then you can appeal. Okay. So back to the question, they are claiming one million. Uh, so definitely there's no issue uh, for the leave. Uh. You don't need the leave, you can appeal with it to the court appeal. Just that right now on the facts, uh, the high court dismissed is because they don't believe Abu testimony. So I'm not sure whoever you know or not. Generally, uh, court appeal or federal court uh, or, or, or high court, even the appellate court, uh, they usually they won't hear the testimony. They won't hear the evidence. They only look at the documents only. Generally, uh, okay? It's because uh, the witness will only come to the court one time. So for example, they before high court for the first first hearing, first trial. Once they've done their part already, uh, when appeal, uh, those witnesses don't need to go again to the court appeal to give the same evidence again. No. So that's, therefore, uh, generally, the appellate court, they won't see the witness for a second time. They, uh, they will just follow the document, which is recorded by the, the lower court or the high court, the first court. Uh. So, in order for you to challenge the finding of the high court, which is, don't believe Apu testimony, how you persuade the court appeal to listen to this. So you need to show what? Number one, facts is inconsistent. Evidence is inadequate. Relevant evidence is not considered and misapprehension of facts. So these are the four things you need to show. Then only uh, the, the, the court appeal will interfere with the facts finding. Like I said, usually, court appeal, federal court will only interfere with the question of law. But then, with all these four situations happen, they may interfere with the uh, law, uh, question of facts. So, this is the thing they want you to discuss. Then only you can get your seven marks. Understand? Okay. Then, let us continue. Question two. Okay, this one, I think maybe we can go by paragraph to paragraph. So, number one, plaintiff filed a writ action against three defendants, namely a government department as a first defendant and against two individuals as a second and third defendant, respectively. The plaintiff served the writ on the first defendant by AR register post to its head office in Putrajaya. The AL card was duly acknowledged by the director of the say government department, who affixed his rubber stamp on the AL card. Okay. Um... I don't know you guys know or not, in order for you to sue government, you, let's say you sue federal government, uh, federal government, yes, you need to serve to the AG because the AG is the so-called lawyer for the government. That's why Malay, they are Japatan Negara Peguam. So they are the Negara Peguam. Okay? So when they are serving to the uh, Putrajaya, actually it's wrong. You should serve to Attorney General. But on the other hand, if you're suing for the state government, then you need to serve to 
uh, so I forgot it. Let me check. Uh. If I'm not mistaken, I think serve to the minister uh, or the what? Uh? Wait, uh, let me check. Uh. Party to litigation 91. Ninety one government, ah, state government. Yeah, they they mention service. We are service service. service. One one one. Mm. Ah, so is okay yeah here government then you need to serve to attorney general if the state state government you need to serve to the state secretary okay okay i see one question yeah keith thank you yes secretary so another one is cindy no matter what case is it to minister, we all serve to AG. Yes, we serve to AG. Um, I stand to be corrected because previously my old firm, they was defending, uh, there's a case, for example, as a, there's a one Malay group, la, they want to declare to say Chinese school and Tamil school are in constitution. So therefore they cited the minister of education as a respondent. So, in that case, because we are acting for the Chinese school, independent Chinese school, um, the person appeared on behalf of the Minister of Education actually is the AG as well. So I assume all the government department, you must serve to AG because as like I say, AG is the lawyer for the country. Ma. So you must serve to the AG, la, no matter what kind of cases. This is what I see. La. Okay. Then we go back. So this one certainly is wrong. La. You shouldn't serve to the Pudajaya without serving to the AG. And second one, the plaintiff served the writ on the second defendant by AL register post to his residential residential office in address, sorry, in the condominium in Kaja. The AL cast were acknowledged by a private security guard in the condo lobby, who also affixed a security company rubber stamp on the AL card. Okay. I think, I think that of course this question is just only nine marks. Ma. So basically you separate into three parts. This one three mark, this one three mark, this one three mark, this one, three mark right? I think if you want to just make it simple, you just say it's, it's not successful, it's not a proper service lah, because by right, you should be signed by the correct person. Lah. But then, because actually based on the case law, I know lah, the law actually doesn't require the real person to acknowledge the AR register post lah, based on the case I have. Lah. But I know, I heard some lawyer friend, they say recently have a new case lah, to say must be acknowledged by the real uh, correct person for the AR card. So, but like I say, it's just three marks for one part. Ma. So if you just want to make it simple, then you just say no, must be acknowledged by the same person. Okay. Then another one, serve to the previous lawyer. This one I think also arguable because actually you can serve to your previous lawyer if your lawyer consent, la, if the lawyer have the necessary authority to act for you. La. Actually, you can serve to the lawyer. So this is the exception for you not to serve on the personal service. La. So the lawyer serve to the lawyer is one of the one of the exceptions. Uh, order that rule one sub two. If the lawyer have the authority to act for you, uh, so I would think this is uh, arguable. But of course, like you want to make it simple, you just say cannot uh, Because unless uh, until this uh, third defender solicitor has a necessary authority, then only you can serve to the lawyer. Understand? Okay. Like I say, it's just nine marks. Uh, so we can just make it simple. Uh. So this is my answer. Lah. I think I have shared this in my Facebook. So if you want this, you can go and download that. Okay. Then next one. A plaintiff filed a reaction against two defendants for damages arising from a breach of contract. Three months later, the plaintiff obtained leave from the court to include Chong as the third defendant in the suit and served the writ summons to on him. Chong is unhappy that he's unnecessarily made a 
defendant to the suit and has sought your advice as to, as to the procedure he should adopt to remove him. Okay, to remove. When the defendant want to remove him, there's only one way. Lah. It will be striking out. No? Once he's striking out, already, then he, his name will be removed. No? So this one will be Order 18, Rule 19, Sub 1. Yeah, to strike out or apply under Order 15, Rule 6, Sub Rule 2A to say that he has been improperly or unnecessary make a party. Okay, so I believe you guys will have the basic understanding of this, right? I won't go further. Lah. Because um, order 18, rule 19, there are four types. Lah. Uh, unreasonable. Uh, no cross of action, lah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. No cross of action, scandalous, prejudice, and abuse of court. But because the facts didn't give any, any, um, any clear facts lah, why he should be removed. Lah. So perhaps we can just touch and go on the point. Lah. Okay? Next one. Para, enter into sale and purchase agreement to acquire a double-story dwelling house from Diva and pay the deposit to Diva. At the same time, Diva commenced negotiation with Wong to purchase Wong house in the neighboring house, housing estate. However, Wong changed his mind to sell his property to Diva and trust unable to proceed with the purchase of Wong property. Diva then informed Para that he doesn't intend to proceed with the sales of his property to Bara and offer to refund the deposit to pay some compensation to Bara. Bara has refused Diva offer and demanded the sale and purchase agreement must be completed. Advise Bara on the critical mode of obtaining judgment against Diva. Okay. Two things to take note. Number one, critical mode of obtaining judgment. So it will be summary judgment. Lah. Number two, sale and purchase agreement, refund or deposit, and also the what we call specific uh, specific performance because they want to continue this contract right? so it's specific performance part. so what he can do will be this one order 81 actions for specific performance this one is one of the summary proceeding lah. so yeah so my answer will be para is advised to file a big summons and say more claim they after apply for a summary judgment under order 81 for specific performance, the application is made by way of notice of application and support by affidavit. So it's nine months, man. So of course we have to mention some uh details. Lah. For example, what is the affidavit you need to mention? Eh, here, state the clause of action, stating he believed that there's no defense, and then we have you can put some case law if you want to say now nah, rule two, sub rule two is not fatal, something like that. Then only you can get your nine marks. Lah. Okay. Actually, I think this year civil uh paper is doable. La. I think it's not like until the level you cannot do la, comparing to criminal. La. Okay. So next one. A plaintiff found a writ action against four defendants in the writ was served on 1st February 2023. By 20 July 2023. So please take note that the time. La. Every time when they give you the time, la, the date la, actually is some. Uh, Hints la, to tell you what is the chapter they want to discuss. La. So you see from February to July, um, I think it's more than six months, right? Or is it more six months? Uh, more than six months. The plaintiff managed to serve the writ on the first, second, third defendant. The fourth defendant is with evading service. On the case management date on 20 July 2023, the court directed that if the writ was not served on the fourth defendant by the next case management, which is on the 30 August 2023, the court would strike out the writ on against the fourth defendant. Advise the plaintiff on the procedure he should adopt to ensure the writ is valid and effectively served on the fourth defendant before the next, next case, case management. Okay, like I highlighted, they give you all the data. Actually, it's the... I, I, I think some student will mention SS order, substitute the service, because when you wouldn't serve, then you need to apply advertising, as etc., right? Actually, it's wrong, because they, you need to know... Uh, the 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 rip, uh, can only valid for six months only. So in this case, uh, actually they want you to discuss order six rule seven to say that a rip can only valid for six months from the date of the uh issue. So on the facts, the issue on first February. So six months will be July, first of July. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I think it should be correct. Uh. So by that day, uh, actually in order on oh, sorry, it shouldn't be July, it should be August, sorry. So if you want to serve before the next date, uh, 
then you must make sure you renew your 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 what is that the read first then only you can serve on the fourth defendant otherwise when this is expired uh, then you cannot use your read already you have to apply a new read you, you understand so the answer should be pursuant to order six through seven it stipulated that the lifespan of the read summon is six months based on the facts the risk was, was issued on first february 2023 Hence, it will expire on 1st August 2023 to ensure the rig remains valid. So that's why you see uh, the question also asking you, rig is valid, how to ensure the rig is valid? So to ensure it's valid, the plaintiff is advised to renew the rig as provided under Order 6, Rule 7, Capital 2A. Okay, so it's that much one. So I think maybe we can further discuss a bit. Lah. So to renew this, uh, pursuant to this uh, Rule 7, to sub two capital A. Uh, number one, you must make before expiry, which means this application must be made before the 1st of August. Second, as part of application, and the FEDW must say two points. Number one, you try best effort to serve ready. Number two, uh, such efforts has been made subsequently to effect the service. Okay. Oh, sorry, the first one is like the first for the first one month you have tried to serve, and then subsequent effort try to serve. All this must be doing before uh, the, the expiry of the rig lah, stated in this case. Oh. Okay. Then let us continue. James, found a rig action against Peter in the claim for goods sold and delivered. At the trial, James' claim was dismissed by the court on the grounds that he has failed to tender as exhibit the relevant invoices and delivered order. James did not file an appeal against the dismissal of his claim. Instead, James filed a fresh action against Peter for the same subject matter and intends that at the facts trial, he will tender invoices and deliver order as a, as a be in the hope that he will succeed in his claim the second time. Peter sought your advice on how he should dispose James' second claim in the quickest uh, way of possible. Okay, so I think understandable that this person tried his luck to file the same thing again, right? So if you are the defendant, you feel uh, how can you be sued for second time for the same matter, what you should do, it will be striking out. Lah. So this one is quite clear. The striking out actually is to say this is a uh, scandalous or, or abuse of court because how can you sue people for, for so many times for the same thing? Let me show you. Uh... Where is it? Where is it? Ah, so I would think A can use, B also can use, D also can use. Ah, because how can you swing for the same thing for second time? So yeah, then we go to this one. The case I will use is this. Supertantro of Pudu present. This is exactly the same facts. If the matter has been trial, an action to retry the same matter will be struck out following the principle of res judicata. Res judicata means the matter has been decided. So thing has been decided, you cannot try second time. Okay. Similar principle or similar concept you can find in the criminal as well. Uh, but I don't know how to uh, read the Latin word. Lah. Okay. Next one. A plaintiff obtained a monetary judgment against the defendant. The defendant is a substantial shareholder in a private limited company involved in a transport business. The plaintiff wants to enforce the judgment against the defendant. Advise the plaintiff on the mode of execution that he should adopt. Okay. Uh, take notes. Uh. Obtain judgment really. Uh. So this chapter must be enforcement of judgment. Okay. It's not like how to apply law or that is how to enforce. So first of all, you need to understand which kind of matter you can enforce. Um, I don't know all of you know or not how many type of enforcement we have. Uh, I just have a quick sharing. Uh. So basically, once you obtain the judgment already, you can read of execution. So the read of execution have three types. Read of season and sale. Let's say go to your house, take your things, go and lay long. Number two, read of possessions, which means ask the tenant return the, the house possession to me. I want to take back the house. Number three, 
uh, rate of delivery. Let's say you have certain thing, certain goods belongs to me. I want you to return to me. Rate of possession. All these three is a rate of execution. Okay. Number two, judgment debtor summon, which is the 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 judgment debtor, the the loser lah, come to court and explain how you're going to pay by installment. Why you don't want to make payment according to the judgment. Garnishi, taking money from the third party, so called lah. Let's say the bank. The bank has the money belongs to the defendant, so we can ask the bank straight away release the money to us. Charging action, uh, like loyalty, uh, like share, all those lah. And equitable execution. Um, this one is kind of similar to charging action, based on my understanding. Uh, yeah. Equitable. Uh, let me see. Uh. Okay, this one. Uh, like rental, profit, royalty, dividends. Uh, okay. So charging action is like share. Uh, okay. Then committed proceeding means like send you to the zero. Uh, to, to present prison. Okay. And then last one, winding out bankruptcy. Uh. So back to our questions. Uh, they say they are the substantial shareholder. Uh, so certainly this one will be the uh, charging action. Uh, because they have a share. Uh, okay. So, but of course, uh, this one is like seven marks. Uh. I also further give some suggestion. Uh, you can say also read and seal the company asset, number one. Number two, ask the director go to court and explain. And number three, charging action of the share. Uh. So this is the three things. Uh. But seven marks, if you want only write two matter, I think it's fine as well. Uh. Because if seven marks, you only write one, one type of uh, enforcement, uh, maybe a bit hard for you to get seven marks. Uh. So my suggestion would be you write more than one lah, maybe two lah, okay. Then we go to number four, Goblo Tractor Association is an association registered under Society Act. Its objective is to promote the trade interest of its member and enhance the relationship amongst its member. Hassan is one of the member. A dispute arose between Hassan and committee member of the association in respect of his conduct regarding the affair of association. Okay. Hansa imputed conduct. Okay, we see a question. Uh, uh, Keep us just a clarification. WSS is executed by a court bailiff or normal person. Court ISK, I wrong, wrong answer. Okay. Um the writ of Caesar and Silver, uh, it should actually apply by the winning party. Let's say the plaintiff win the case already. The plaintiff will apply. Once he apply already, then the court will ask you to pay the deposit, then the bailiff, the so-called bailiff actually is a court officer, will go together with you to the, 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 the defendant house. Ah, I'm not sure if I have a sample I can show you. Ah. They will go together with you. Ah. Okay, so this is basically a case I have. Lah. So they will send a letter to my law firm. They tell me, okay, if you want me to have this, this is season and sale, WSS. Lah. On this date, please, you have to make the deposit to this. Then the bailiff will go together with you to the premise. Ah, so they, they need some money. One, lah. Okay, so once you pay already, then they also ask you to pay the security fee. Uh, 96, ne? Pegawai Keselamatan. Why? Because uh, when you go to the house, some people may not be cooperative, right? Let's say they refuse to come out. They refuse to open the door. So, or, or some people may want to uh, take it violently. La. They will, may hit you or what. La. So then you need the Keselamatan to help you understand. Uh, okay? If understand, right? Then shall we continue? Okay. Imputed conduct. The committee member of the association decided to call for the Extraordinary General Meeting, EGM, for the member to discuss and pass the resolution as Pal Hassan as a member of the association. The agenda of the EGM include a discussion about Hassan imputed conduct, blah, blah, blah. blah okay? Fearing of the defamatory remark made, may be made against him during the discussion at the EGM. Hassan, seven days before the EGM, through his lawyer, filed a great action at the High Court against the association in the name of its president, seeking the declaration that the association does not have the power to expel him based on the grounds of his imputed conduct. 
At the same time, Hassan filed an ex parte application applying for a, an order to restrain the convening and holding of an EGM pending the disposal of his rig action. Hassan lawyer did not give notice of ex parte application to the president of the association. Neither did Hassan state in the affidavit in support of the ex parte application why ex parte application cannot be heard, heard in the party and why no notice was given to the president of the association. Give your answer as to the opinion of the ex parte application filed by Hassan. Okay. Uh, certainly this is injunction. Lah. They, they want to file an injunction to stop uh, what we call uh, a meeting. There's an injunction. Okay. So not sure whether you guys know or not. Injunction can be divided into two parts. Ex parte and inter parte. Ex parte means like just one party apply. So there is no party will oppose your application. We call ex parte. In the party, on the other hand, will be like here by both parties. So you will submit your case, the other side will submit their case. So if you write order at 29, uh, if your situation is that um, super urgent, actually the law allows you to have an ex parte injunction just for 21 days. Okay, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay, so the ex parte injunction only where there is urgency and you need to explain why so urgent and there's a uh, facts you need to state in your affidavit if you refer to order 29 then only they will allow you to have this uh so-called temporary uh injunction but within this temporary 21 days uh, you must also fix an inter-party injunction to explain to the court whether this temporary injunction should become permanent injunction or not so on this case uh uh, pursuant to 29, uh, a court shall not grant an injunction on an ex parte application if the effect is to stop the holding or progress of a meeting of a body, corporate or society, uh, association, a uh, unit, blah, blah, blah. However, on, uh, okay, basically order 29, sub 1, sub 2C got mentioned, we shouldn't allow injunction to stop a meeting. Yes, you can have a uh, injunction urgency for the inter-party in for temporary. But then, Order 29, Rule 1, Sub 2C clearly stated that this kind of injunction shouldn't be allowed. So we can file in this. Lah. So basically by stating this and also saying uh, Hassan failed to satisfy the affidavit on fixing inter-party and also mention why it's so urgent, the ex party actually should fail. Okay? Okay. Uh, actually, this one... Maybe some students, they, they, they look at the question very long, they may feel panic. Lah. But actually, it's rather straightforward. You can find the answer in the ROC. What about the springboard injunction? Why is this? Uh, I never see before. Eh? Okay, based on what I know, uh, injunction only have this few type. Lah. Maybe this is a new one. Uh. Is this from Malaysia called springboard injunction? Because from what I know, from B uh, ATC is prohibitory, malewa, enter pillar, and then uh, mandatory, quick time, and referred, and add injuring injunction. I haven't seen the springboard injunction before. Lah. And I don't think it is in BSC book as well. Let me see. Uh, no, no such. Because it's my lecturer told us that there is one springboard injunction to stop a meeting. Uh, or is it? Um, never mind. Later, let me have some study on this. Then I get back to you. So far, I never heard before. Lah. But in any event, uh, if this springboard injunction is not from Malaysia, uh, but we have a rules of court which is governed this, uh, then of course the rules of court should prevail. Lah. The rules of court is the is the law. Uh, and the case law, if, if it's not from Malaysia, I think it's a bit hard for us to apply. Lah. Okay? Then... Can I continue? Okay. B. Assuming the High Court judge does not hear Hassan application applying for an order to restrain the convening and holding of the EGM pending the disposal of his reaction by way of ex parte, but set the matter down for an inter parte hearing two days before the EGM after the party have exhausted their action every day. Okay. As the lawyer for the association, outline your submission to oppose the inter party application by considering the relevant legal principle and decided cases. So this is, you need to persuade to the court to say why 
the 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 inter party injunction shouldn't be granted lah. So my suggestion to say will be non compliant with the order twenty nine rule one sub two capital A, uh about the 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 what, uh affidavit things up. And then number two, non compliant with the uh, one sub C is because injunction shouldn't be granted for the stopping the holding, uh stopping the 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 meeting no. So this will be the main two two reason for me to to oppose that. So there are the case also. This is the case that. So yeah, eighteen marks. So this, if you want to fight for this eighteen marks, I think it's, uh a bit hard lah. As I always suggest, if the question like a lot of marks uh, make sure you can write that much in order to impress the the examiner. Otherwise, usually I would more suggest people to do uh like five marks, ten marks. Because they want the threshold will be lower, lower, right? You easier for you to get. Mark. For example, they ask you, what is the mode of commencement? You just need to write order five rule six. I think one or two marks you can get ready, right? Although you may not have confidence to get five marks. But with this 18 marks, uh, I think you need to write a lot of things uh, in order to get at least 10 marks, right? So I think it's not that simple. Uh. Okay. Then question five. Ahmad, the managing partner of ABC Trading Company. A partnership has sought your advice to file a rig action against two parties, namely the Bukit Lusa Club, which is registered society and against the estate of Puma, deceased. No letter of administration or probate has been issued for the estate of the deceased. Advice Ahmed as to who should be named in the proper party in the proposed rig of summon. Okay. So, club. Of course, club is not a legal entity, right? So, you shouldn't sue the Bukit Lusa Club, lah. You need to sue the office barrel, okay? So let me show you uh, office barrel. Okay. Ah. So now they are defendant. Uh. So society, you need to sue register public officer or office barrel. This is number one, uh, pursuant to section 62, Society Act. Number two, uh, the person who is a deceased and no LA, no probate. Okay, this one. You need to go to defendant ma, before filing ma. either personal representative, which is executor or administrator. However, on this case, they say no probate, no LA ma. So this part, we need to ignore. Then go to this one. So which means we can sue, cite the Amaraya as a respond, uh, as a defendant. No? We sue him. No? Or alternatively, you may go to order 15 rule 6a. Yeah? You ask the court permission to 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 substitute someone to representative to represent the deceased no? under order fifteen rule six capital A. You can do that. Okay. So my answer will be this one: register. Uh, sorry, register public officer, office barrel for the Bukit Club. Number two, executor or administrator or Amana Raya. Okay. Okay. Yeah. B. Pans files a rig action against Donald in the High Court. The clause of action is in defamation. In his statement of claim, Pan quanti quantified the general damages. Okay, this one I think is a is the, is the problem with it. Uh. We cannot quantify general damages, right? Right? Okay. Can we go to our loose of court? Since today we haven't opened our loose of court yet. Can we go to order 18? All pleading you can find in order 18. Uh. So order 18, rule 12, sub 1 capital A. No party shall quantify any claim or counter claim for general damages. So this is the first mistake they made in order 18, rule 12, 1 capital A. So, and pray for 2 million as damages. So this one is wrong. Uh. After the pleading was closed, the case was set up for trial. On the trial date, Donald and his counsel were absent in court, having been prevented from reaching the court due to the serious protein. The telephone communica telecommunication service was disrupted. Donald's counsel was unable to inform the court of his difficulty to reach court. Okay? As Donald and his counsel were absent in court, the court gave judgment for the plea to, for, for, for Pan in the sum of 2 million without Pan having proved the damages and granted the cost of 50,000 to Pan, okay? Then, 
advised Donald on the validity of the judgment entered against him and the procedure he should adopt. Okay, so I think some of you may advise uh, to appeal, right? Because it got the judgment mark. So in order to challenge him to appeal mark, right? Actually, this is gone. This one should be order the divide to set aside because uh, the judgment was obtained in the absence of their, of their presence. Right? So this one, then you should follow the law. The correct law actually is order the divide rule too. You can set aside if the court gives judgment because of your absence. So either you are plaintiff, you are defendant. Both also you can apply for, for setting aside the judgment when you absent for this. Uh. So this is not appeal. Uh. Please remember, uh. nah, I put this is not setting aside under order 13 because the judgment was obtained during trial stage. Okay. Because I think some of some, some of the students may think like, oh, order 13, ma, uh, judgment in default, ma. We are not present, but, but this is different. Uh. Judgment in default order 13 is for you fail to file memorandum of appearance, okay? Which is this stage. Let me show you. Uh, this stage. This. Before this. Before appearance, then you file order 13. And then, if you fail to file defense, uh, the judgment in default of defense uh, is order 19. So it's before this, okay? Then, now it's trial. So it's another order, it's order 35. So we have different kind of order to setting aside different kind of judgment. Eh? So please take note. Eh? Okay. Then let's first go to this. C. A plaintiff application to amend. Eh, sorry. To amend his statement of claim in the High Court was heard and dismissed by the registrar. The plaintiff is aggrieved by the decision. Advise the plaintiff on the next course of action he should adopt. Okay, I think this one is a uh, appeal from registrar to high court law. Yeah, appeal from registrar to high court under order 56. So if only six months, I think we can just briefly tell the procedure lah, to say what you need to file, which form, all this you can find in the rules of court. Uh, uh, but I know many people may feel panic lah, because it's not a common question they ask. Lah. So that's why it's very important for me to, to, to share you need to be familiar with the chapter and also attend more passive questions so that you roughly know what kind of pattern they will ask in the passive questions. Okay. Then next one. A plaintiff filed a rape action against three defendants for breach of contract. After pleading was closed, each of the defendant filed application to amend their respective defense. The first defendant want to add allegation that in his defense to effect that the plaintiff is a gamble, throttle, criminal. These allegations are not connected to the facts. Of course, this one cannot. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. Since the question is asking uh, whether plaintiff can object uh, the amendment or not. Uh, so I think certainly can. Uh, because your application must be relevant. It's not anything you want. You, you cannot amend something which is irrelevant. Again, like I mentioned just now, if you want to amend the pleading, before close of pleading, amend as, as, as you like. But this one is after close of pleading. Therefore, they need the leave for court. And when you need the leave for court, uh, the court will consider a few uh, things before to allow your, your amendment. Amendment, they will look at whether it's bona fide, whether it cross prejudice, whether it will change the character. This is the most general one. Uh. But of course, on the facts, uh, the number one, they want to add this nonsense thing. Uh, then you can look at the case we call, let me see uh, what case I use. Oh, sorry. I just should have been used irrelevant and not bona fide. Uh, okay. So this is for the first part. Number, number two, the second defendant in his original defense admitted that he entered into a contract with the plaintiff, but denied he breached the contract. In his proposed amended defense, he denied even knowing the plaintiff or enter into contract. So this one is like to withdraw their, their, their admission. So this one obviously cannot. Lah. So the case I use is this one. To withdraw admission. Because you are wasting time. You admitted already, but now you want to withdraw. Isn't it? You are wasting the court time. So yeah, this is the case I use. Third one. The third defendant want to amend his defense by alleging fraud and breach of trust against the plaintiff, but fail to give particular of the allegation. Okay, this one also not allowed because he cannot change the character. Like I mentioned just now, 
you want to amend, you must make sure you satisfy these three. Bona fide, not prejudice, not changing character. Why changing character? Ah? It's because this action is the contract. Ah. How can you now change to fraud? Eh? Like two different things, ah, understand? But I can share my personal uh, experience with you all. Ah. I am suing one defendant for breach of contract as well. And this defendant also saying fraud. So they want to add and, and amend the, 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 the fraud case, the, the amend their counterclaim. I try my best to oppose, but the judge also allowed. The judge say, oh, it's okay, we can hear both matter together. So sometimes maybe case law and the real practice is different, honestly. Then can we go to B? Okay, XYZ recently purchased an oil pump plantation at the public auction. XYZ had discovered that there is a place of worship which was elected on the land in 1950 with the consent of the previous owner. The place of worship has two occupants and no rent is paid. There are 20 houses erected on the land with 50 occupants who are not paying the rent. They are not in any way connected with to the previous owner of the land. So please take note, uh, we divided into two groups of people. Uh. Number one is with the consent of previous owner, two. And, and then second, second people is the 50 who don't even know who is this and no connected with the previous owner. So it's 11 marks, uh, you need to highlight it. Uh. Uh, obviously, they are asking you how to evict. Uh. So for the eviction, uh, it certainly is order 89 to ask the squatter out. However, uh, the squatter, you can only apply for the second part, uh, which is the 50 occupants. Uh. But for the two person uh, who are with the consent of the owner, uh, you cannot use order 89 because order 89 cannot, is not applicable to tenant holding over or the person who allowed to stay in the land. Order 89 only decide for to evict squatter. Understand? So I think this is the tricky part. Uh. Uh. It has to, uh, uh, but I didn't mention here. Uh, yeah, but please take note that uh, you can only to evade the 20 person, uh, sorry, the 50 person, but it's not the tenant holding over. Uh, understand this one, okay? Order 89. You guys have any question you can ask me. Uh, you can ask in the chat box and I will reply you. Uh. Okay, C. Ama filed a read action in the section court against Paka. The section court granted judgment in favor of Amal. Pakao has filed a notice of appeal to the High Court against the decision of the section's court. Pakao wants to adduce fresh evidence in at the hearing of the appeal. Okay, fresh evidence actually is allowed. On section court to High Court, we can refer to Order 55, Rule 7. And the test is Lam and Marshall. And Lam and Marshall say, you can only tender fresh evidence during appeal stage uh, where, number one, that evidence is not available in that time. Number two, it will influence the decision, which means very, 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 very important. Then only you can uh, bring this fresh evidence. Otherwise, uh, why you didn't bring this evidence in the lower court stage? Why you only bring it in the high court stage? Uh, are you wasting the court time? So these two stage, uh, these two things you must satisfy before the court allow your fresh evidence, huh? okay? I think this one also quite straightforward, huh? five marks, okay? Then, go to our next question. Pam and her 10 years old Andy were walking alone in the pathway when a car driven about the speed limit by Roger, stealing and collidal into them. Pam suffered permanent brain injury and is forever unable to care for herself. Andy suffered serious injury but was made full recovery. Tommy is the husband of Pam and the father of Andy has sought your advice to commence a legal action for negligence. Okay. Advice Tony as to who should be named as a plaintiff. So the plaintiff here, the person who suffered will be the wife who are right now um, forever unable to care for herself, permanent in, uh, brain injury. So okay, you lah. And the child. A child is less than 10 years. Ma. So if we flip to our Order 76. 76. Um, yeah, 76 define who is person under disability. One, uh. So it is minor and patient. So patient is under, patient means patient. Lah. I mean, the, the person who cannot take care of themselves. Lah. So it becomes uh, uh, these two person 
must be represented by a legal le litigation representative, which is the husband. No? So this husband will be named as a plaintiff, then bracket acting for the wife and the children. Yeah. So this is the answer. Uh, I saw a question. So Cindy asked, if a legal tenant illegally sublet to another tenant without the legal owner permission, is the new tenant considered squatter? Um, good question, arguable, but I think it's a, I think it's a squatter lah. Because the law is um, the person who stay in the land must be with the consent of the owner. Ma. The owner must know you. Ma. But if you sublet and the owner doesn't know this subtenant, uh, I think from the owner perspective, he is a squatter. La, I think la. unless there is a case law say otherwise. La. Because you know, right, we are common law country. Ma. So sometimes when the law drafted it this way, but then when the court interpret the law in case law, maybe they will interpret in other way. La. So, but my opinion is I think they are squatter to the owner because the owner doesn't know them. Okay. Okay, so this one is order 76. I think this, this chapter uh, for person under disability also they ask quite often. Uh, so maybe you guys should take note. Uh. If I'm not mistaken, I think last year compulsory question, question one, they also asking a similar question. Uh. Then we go to B. A rate action was filed in the section court against Roger for injury caused to pain and anti. The insurance of Roger was defending the rate action on his behalf. The trial date is fixed at the end of 2024. Tony is finding it difficult to meet the expenses of taking care of Tan and who require full-time nursery care. Advise Tony on the procedure he should adopt. Okay, this one is the what we call uh, the call the other name. Uh. I know it's 22A, uh, but I forgot the name. Oh, interim payment. So this interim payment means uh, we haven't been the case, but I want to ask the payment in advance. So 22A actually allow you to do that. Lah. So I think this is fairly straightforward. Lah. So it's only eight months. Lah. So basically you just say, we can advise uh, interim payment and then uh, it's support by affidavit. I think I've done a similar question before. If I may, I share with you just a quick one on how I grew like that. So usually my style of writing it, lah. but this is not for this question, lah. this is for another question. Lah. So we just say, uh, what we are writing today, we are required to advise what, what, what. Number two, we say the facts, uh, what happened to the facts, okay? So you can see, uh, facts. And number two, we say what is the relevant law. Uh, so we explain order 20A, uh, 22A, and then also we say what is the law. Uh, okay, like, like I always uh, mentioned in my class, uh, if you want to show your, your, your sentence very long, uh, like, like professional a bit, uh, and you feel you don't want to just copy and paste the statute, uh, you can copy the statute one time and then you use your word to explain. Let's say like in other words, it means that uh, so you use those words to explain, uh, isn't it? Your 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 answer will look longer and also the examiner know you are not just copy and paste one. Okay. Then after that, only we tell the procedure law. So then we say like uh they need to file in what form, they need to serve the affidavit, how they do, then only we give the conclusion. Uh, so this is the style how I write my answer. Like. So we have you guys should, can refer and then uh, do the same thing. Uh, because this one work, it must actually quite high also. Uh, but this is as simple as that. You just need to tell it's uh, interim payment. Okay. Last one. Okay. Prior to the trial date, Roger, through his instrument, make an offer to settle to Tony pursuant to the relevant provision. The offer is not substantial. Advise Tony on the procedure he should adopt if he either accept or reject. So offer to settle which will be order 22 capital B. La. So that one is if Tony wishes to accept the offer to settle, he may serve the acceptance in form 36. This one you can find in order 22 B. On the other hand, if Tony wishes to reject the offer, he may ignore the offer or reply to lodger. So take note on 22 B rule 7. Okay, what's it? What is uh rule 7? Uh? Basically, rule 7 is that. They encourage you to settle. Ma. So let's say you don't accept the offer to settle. At the end, uh, oh sorry, this one rule 7 is party under disability. But I don't think this is that relevant here. Mm. Basically, you are saying you are making the, the settlement on behalf of the person under disability. Yeah. 
but I don't think it's that relevant. Uh. I just want to highlight that. So put here. Uh. Okay. Any more question? I think this is our sewer procedure. I have to say honestly, I think sewer procedure is not that super, super hard this year because I have a student, he used to fill his uh, sewer procedure, but he managed to pass. Uh. After he 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 come out from the exam hall, he even texted me to say this year is very simple, very easy, uh, he said. So I think it's doable, uh, doable. Okay. Any question, Dr. Chi? Um, fine. I have been following what you said. <laughs> I the ballet, I used to park CP and fill this paper. Haha. <laughs> CP is what? Criminal procedure. Um, but it's always like that, lah. You pass one paper, but then you fill another paper, lah. I don't know whether they are on purpose or not, lah. So, Keith, are you are you a uh, conditional pass? For 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 silver or what? Oh, conditional pass of silver. Okay lah, better than nothing lah. My my student, they all feel more than two, so they have to receive for entire people lah. So set for them lah. So at least you are conditional pass. This time you can pass with it lah. Ninety nine percent can pass conditional lah. Conditional pass lah. Okay. So guys, any more question? No problem. Welcome, welcome. So if no more question, then we will stop here. We will call it a day. And then we... Ah, uh, yeah, Dr. Chi. No, no, no. I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much, bro. Thank no you for helping. <laughs> no nice problem. session with you. No problem. Dr. Chi also helped me a lot. <laughs> okay, so we will call it a day.